So forgive me, Ku, I thought you had mentioned before that you did some couch surfing or that when you were first, you know, working on the website, you stayed at a friend's house or you did something. Uh, yeah, no, I actually, um, you know, I worked at MTV for three years and I got laid off with 700 other MTV employees in the same day. Uh, and after that, I went and I uh, had a project called Third Rail which is a murder mystery on a New York City subway train that is sort of interactive and transmedia. And, uh, you know, we had an agent and we went out to LA and we pitched that. I spent a lot of time um, taking meetings and um, making script revisions and what amounted to a lot of free work, you know, because people are always set up at one place and they want you to make these changes. And all of a sudden you're, you're realizing that your job is to, to be on conference calls and to uh, be taking meetings, not actually uh, making movies. So uh, my experience coming back to New York from that was I felt like the projects that I want to make are risky. And I felt like the people I was meeting with in Hollywood, their job was to mitigate risk. You know, if they take risks and they fail, then they lose their job. So uh, I wanted to come back and have something that I owned that I could hopefully turn into some sort of regular income stream that would allow me to make risky projects without having to say yes to something that I wasn't interested in doing. You know, some of our pitches were, oh, well, you know, we, we, this doesn't really fit into our wheelhouse. This isn't our mandate. But if you, if you want to do something with this, you know, comic book property that we own, uh, you know, pitch us something based on that. Um, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, so that's when I came back and I wanted to start no film school. But, you know, having been laid off from my job, I didn't have any income. And I knew that starting a website from scratch was going to take if it ever took off, it would take a long time. So the biggest, the best thing I could do was cut out all the, my need to pay rent, you know, get my bills down as low as they could possibly be. And so thankfully I had some friends I could stay with. Um, you know, so I was, uh, I was in several states. I was in Costa Rica for a while, um, which was great. It's cheaper than New York and their beaches are amazing. And, you know, um, the cost of living in New York is so high that essentially I, I just moved out of my apartment and then I lived a lot of different places where any place that had internet access, I could be launching the website, I could be blogging, I could be putting up new posts and researching what to do. Um, so that was great. And I think so much of pursuing a creative career is taking risks and the risk versus reward of leaving your day job is a really hard thing for a lot of people to do. And whenever I get a chance, I always encourage people, you know what, especially, you know, if you're at a time where <clears throat> you don't have, you know, kids depending on you, if, if you're at a time where the risk of losing your regular income stream is great, it's probably gonna get greater the older you get. So if, if you believe in yourself and you wanna pursue this artistic pursuit, then there's probably no time like the present. And I think a lot of times it's hard because you don't know what it's going to look like or what you're going to do. Um, but there's no really way to find that out until you give yourself some space from, you know, eight hours a day of doing somebody else's bidding. And so for me, it was, I have to do this. Um, I always said at MTV that I was going to be my last day job. And so it was me sticking to my word and, you know, putting my money where my mouth is or putting my lack of money where... I don't know, that, that, that analogy gets mixed up. But, uh, you know, I think I had to do it, and thankfully it worked out. Um, but, you know, I, I imagine what would have happened if I just did the safe thing, and I just took another day job. And I was a senior designer at MTV. You can make great money doing, you know, design. You can make better money doing that than, uh, you know, filmmaking for the most part. Um, but so I think, I think taking that risk was the best thing I could have done. And... Um, you, know, you have to make sacrifices to do that. And for me, it was, well, I'm not going to have an address for a year. Uh, but it was absolutely, it was, you know, it was, it was great. What advice can you give to someone else? Maybe they're not even a filmmaker, but they're, quote, sleeping on someone's couch. I've been there. And there's a feeling of sort of powerlessness. And you're like, am I ever going to come out of this? So what are some of the tips you can give to other people that I'm sure you had some pretty dark nights of the soul, or maybe you didn't. And, and it, it gets scary. And, but then you came out. And now things are better. So how did you do that? How did you kind of keep those commitments to yourself? Because there are probably days when you could get lost and mm -hmm. say, you know what, I'm going to find the safe route again. You know, I think 
for, for filmmaking and for creative pursuits, the, one of the biggest challenges is when you need permission. Um, and so the whole idea for me getting away from, from, from pitching things in LA during that stretch was, you know, and, and that's how I launched my career was just making a web series and putting it up online and not requiring somebody else's permission or approval. Um, and I think what it comes down to is just doing the work, you know, we can be here talking about it and you can do consultancies and you can write blog posts, but ultimately, you know, that's the other reason I track hours is to make sure that you're doing the work at the end of the day. And, you know, the more things you can do that don't require someone else, uh, you know, the better as far as getting your foot in the door, making something, putting it out there and, you know, hopefully getting attention for it and, and moving on to the next step. So, you know, we're all going to run into writer's block. We're all going to have those dark nights where, you know, is what I'm doing, is it terrible? Am I ever going to make it at this? Um, but, but for me, the, the, the work ethic and just sitting down there and focusing on the work is what keeps me, sort of keeps me on track because I, you know, I believe in, I believe in failing forward. So you're going to learn as much from something that failed, if not more than you are from something that was successful. So therefore the only real formula is to just keep doing the work. Sounds like you weren't doing too much ruminating. You were just you were just doing it. Like not a lot of ooh, is this? It sounds like you were just. Like I mean, you, said, you know, putting in... you know, we're all introspective. Rumination can be great as an artist, but my big thing is just no complaining. You know, no whining, no complaining. We all are struggling with, you know, uh, massive obstacles, and complaining gets you nowhere. So 